In this video, WikiHow will interview expert virologist Dr. Shannon Bennett to learn how and why to stay healthy during the pandemic. How can we prevent the contraction and spread of COVID-19? The coronavirus is getting into our cells, particularly our respiratory tissues. So that means that we need to protect ourselves from introducing the virus into our respiratory tissues. This might mean, for example, avoiding people that are coughing or spraying droplets. And this is why social distancing is so very important, especially if you yourself might be sick and potentially distributing virus through coughing or sneezing. Besides directly infecting each other through a cough or a sneeze, for example, is that sometimes we can deposit virus on surfaces and then people can touch those surfaces pick them up on their hands, and then introduce them to their respiratory tissues. For example, touching their mucous membranes, their eyes, their nose, their mouth. We don't think this virus can get into the body in any other way, except mainly through respiratory tissues. Why is hand washing effective against the virus? The reason for why hand washing is so very effective with this virus is because it's an enveloped virus. This envelope is a lipid or a fat-based covering of the virus capsule that contains the genetic information. Because it's lipid-based or fat-based, it's actually disrupted by soap. Just like when you wash your greasy pots and pans with soap, you break up the grease, you break up the fat. And so soap kills the virus by breaking up its fatty outer membrane. You want to wash for at least 20 seconds with a lot of soap. Using soap when you wash your hands is the most important thing. You don't need hot water, but the soap is critical. And what you want to do is basically make sure that the soap has good contact with all the parts of your hands. And you want to wash between your fingers, under your fingernails. I'm not wearing any rings because I want to be able to wash my hands under my rings and even washing up to the first part of your wrist. So moving your sleeves up and washing thoroughly backs of hands, palms between the fingers and under the nails for at least 20 seconds. We so often forget to wash our hands before we touch our eyes, our nose, our mouth after we've touched surfaces or other people's hands. And what we want to do is get into the habit of washing very frequently. What does it mean to flatten the curve? The curve actually refers to the change in daily new cases over time during the course of an epidemic. It starts out with maybe a very few number of daily new cases as the epidemic is just first beginning. And then as the growth rate increases, the reproductive number of the virus translates into many, many new cases deriving from every one case, you see exponential growth in the daily new cases. Eventually, those daily new cases will stop growing exponentially and they'll start to level off and then they'll start to drop as the epidemic passes. We call it the passing of the epidemic wave. So that's the curve. The rate at which the daily new cases grows, the steepness of the leading edge of that curve is what we're trying to change what impact does social distancing and sheltering in place have on the curve? When we talk about social distancing and shelter in place, we're trying to reduce the steepness so that the doubling time of the new cases happens over a longer period. And that has two impacts. The first main impact is that the number of new cases that are hitting our healthcare system at any one time is lower. That might not reduce the total number of daily new cases, but importantly, the daily new cases won't be hitting the healthcare system all at once in a way that overstrips the healthcare system's ability to care for people. And in places where we haven't been able to flatten the curve, to come in under the healthcare capacity's ability to care for people, we see this higher case fatality rate. So it's really important to protect people from dying of this virus to flatten the curve. We can 
do our part by not maybe going into a hospital setting where not only are we more at risk at picking up an infection, it also reduces the pressure on the healthcare system. Why will antibody tests help us understand the impact of coronavirus? One way to understand the true size of the number of infected people in a population is to develop a test where we can look at where the virus has been, who has been infected. And so this is getting away from being dependent on tests that only record the presence of active virus and actually look for the imprint of a past infection that the virus has made on our immune system. So when we're infected with a virus or another agent, our body will mount an immune response. We call it the adaptive immune response. And one of the components of that immune response is the production of antibodies that are specific to that pathogen or to that specific agent. And so the antibody that we can detect in our system after a coronavirus infection will be specific to that coronavirus. The challenge is to identify what those antibodies are that are specific to COVID-19 and then develop a test to look for them. As we begin to understand the true size of the number of infected people in our communities through antibody tests and virus tracer tests, we'll better be able to predict the trajectory of the virus and the amount of time we'll need to stay at home or remain socially distant. Though COVID-19 is a serious, threatening disease, we are not without means to protect ourselves and those we love from infection. Remember to always wear a mask, wash your hands thoroughly, disinfect high-touch surfaces, and practice social distancing measures. If we stay diligent, we will be able to weather this virus together.